Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. So the iPhone 14 Pro is out, we can get our hands on it, which means we can now take a look at the A16 Bionic. Now, if you saw my previous video about the A16 Bionic, you saw that Apple were emphasizing its power efficiency and not really talking about its new performance. So the question is, what is the performance of the A16 Bionic? Well, if you wanna find out more, please well, let me explain. So just as a recap, if you remember, uh, the number of transistor growth from the A15 Bionic to the A16 Bionic is not the same as what we saw between the previous two generations. Apple were emphasizing power efficiency. It's built on a new four nanometer process. It's really a tweaked version of the five nanometer process from TSMC. And really the question is, is it a whole new processor? Is it a new CPU architecture, a new GPU architecture? Or is Apple reusing the CPU from the A15 and tweaking it a bit, changing the display driver, changing the image uh, signal processor, changing the neural engine, but the CPU and GPU are fundamentally the same with just some tweaks. Well, let's dive into some performance figures and see what we can find out. So let's start with Geekbench and the single threaded score for the iPhone 14 non-pro version, so that's got the A15 Bionic in it, is 1,696. So the real question is, what does the A16 Bionic give us? And the answer is 1,870, which is an increase of around 10%. Now the thing about Geekbench is that the results can fluctuate a bit. I've seen some other results that would bring that down to maybe just 7%. So a 7 to 10% increase in performance for single thread. That basically means that those two high performance uh, cores are each able to add between seven and 10% more. Now, is that because of a new architecture? Is that because Apple has changed it and done some more stuff? Or is it because of something simple as the clock speed? Well, let's look at the clock speed numbers. The clock speed of the A15 in the uh, iPhone 13 was actually uh, 3.23, 3.24 gigahertz, according to Geekbench. Now, the speed of the uh, processor, the CPU in the A16 is 3.44 gigahertz. So that's an increase of around six, six and a half percent. So here we can see an increase in performance of seven to 10% and an increase in the clock speed of what, just under 7%. So whatever Apple have done with the CPU and the GPU inside of the A16, it looks like it's gaining most of its performance by the fact that it's able to up the clock speed. It was able to up the clock speed because it's moved down to this new process node, four nanometers, able to tweak it a bit, pump up that clock speed and uh, use the efficiency they may have built in to the, uh, the rest of the SOC so that actually there's no overall change in battery life or certainly not something that's going to be uh, detrimental. So from that first look, it seems as if my suspicions are true that the A16 is really just a tweaked version of the A15. So what about multi-threaded scores? Well, let's have a look at those. So the iPhone 14, the non-pro version, scores 4,742 in the multi-threaded benchmark. And the iPhone 14 Pro, which has the A16 Bionic, scores 5,474. So that's an overall increase of 15%. And so if you think about it, you've got this hexa-core setup, two high-performance cores, four power-efficiency cores. The performance benefit is mainly going to come in those two high-performance uh, cores. We saw a 7 to 10% increase. Let's call it 7.5, or 7.5 plus 7.5 is 15%. So when all the cores are being used, you get the extra 7.5% from uh, one high-performance core. You get the other 7.5% from the other high-performance cores. And so what we're seeing is the single-threaded score being applied to two processors and that then bumping up the multi-threaded score. Now, these aren't figures to be uh, laughed at. These aren't figures to be sneered at. They are actually good performance increase, double-digit performance increases. However, they're not due, it seems to me, to be because of the architecture, but because of the clock speed. Now, I'll just show you some GPU numbers here. This is using 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme benchmark. And my guesstimation is that that's about a 20% increase 
of what we had compared to the previous iPhones and what you had to the Apple A15 Bionic. And the reason we're seeing that here is first we are guaranteed those are five GPU cores. We know the bandwidth has been increased to the GPU. That means it can be used slightly more. We know there's a greater clock speed for the CPU. There may be a greater clock speed for the GPU. So it doesn't look like it's a new GPU specifically. It looks like it is just a tweaked version that is able to produce some better performance. So what can we say? Yes, the A16 Bionic is the fastest iPhone processor to date. Yes, it's the fastest smartphone processor to date. But is it a revolution like the A14 and the A15 were? No, this looks like Apple are gaining in the uh, performance field by just turning up the clock speed. Crank it up, you're going to get faster performance. Of course, that does then leave the question of thermals. Here I'm going to show you a picture of the stress test that you can get for 3D Mark and shows you that after several runs, you can see that performance does start to take a dip. And in fact, by the end of a long run, you're looking about 80% of what you originally had when you're running the phone from cold. I'm sure there'll be lots of people out there doing GenSync impact videos showing the thermal situation with the iPhone 14 Pro. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, well, I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your mail address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>